Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the match preview for Chelsea versus Middlesbrough. A place at Wembley is up for grabs with the Blues having to turn over a 1-0 deficit from an absolutely horrendous first leg performance. Injuries have got a little bit better, but there's still no Nkunku and now Malo Gusto is also going to be missing this game. Stamford Bridge is going to need to be rocking. They need to get behind the boys. The atmosphere is going to need to be electric because it's going to be a tough task. We know Middlesbrough are going to come and sit deep. They don't need to score. They don't need to do anything. So an early goal is going to be really, really crucial to disrupt their game plan. But I'd like to be joined by Josh from the kickoff, mate. Thanks for coming. Always a pleasure to talk things Chelsea with you. It's a massive week for the club, not just this game, but also the game against Villa Friday night in the F. FA Cup. In, in reality, mate, in four days' time, the season's either going to have a cup final and an FA Cup run potentially, or it could all be over. I mean, out of both cup, out of both cups. I mean, how, how are you feeling heading into this into this week? Because it's make or break really for the season, mate. It's it's going to be a very stressful week. And thanks again for having me on. It's lovely to chat to you. Yeah, I'm I'm nervous. I'm nervous, mate. Uh, I uh, I do think, as you say, uh, it's make or break, and maybe it's make or break more for Mauricio Pochettino, even more than our season you know, per se for Chelsea Football Club. Because I just think if we don't get this result against Borough and then things don't go away against Villa, then obviously we got Liverpool after that in the Premier League as well. So, you know, it's a tough three games. If we don't get the results that we need in those three games, you could see the pressure absolutely being piled on to Mauricio Pochettino. We talked about that in our last video we did together. So, yeah, mate, it's a, it's a key one. Do you know what? Uh, it's an interesting question I'm going to pose back to you. What game would you rather win out of the two games we've got coming up? So would you oh. rather have the FA Cup run or would you rather get to the final of the Carabao? Oh, mate, get to the final all day long. Yeah, yeah. Because because this FA Cup game, this only puts us to the fifth round. There's still multiple stages to go. I'll, I'll take a cup final all day. Obviously, I'd rather lose none. But yeah, the cup final is, is 100% the most the most important one uh, for me. But I mean, if we, if we look at... Let's just kind of strip this one back, mate. Obviously, it's been... I, I'm sick. I don't know about you, Matt. I'm sick of this kind of lying, basically, in press conferences or just not revealing information. Uh, I know they don't have to, but in Kunku, right? We were told before the Preston game he won't be starting. It's just it's a it's a minor issue. The guy's been out for three weeks now. He hasn't played no. since Luton on the 30th of December, right? And it's still being described as Poch as not a minor issue. I was like, mate, he's not played for three weeks. What, what, what's going on here? I mean, you, and then we got the Malagusto thing. He wasn't even on the injury on injury report list uh, before the press conference. And he had to be added to it afterwards. Apparently, you know, it's muscular overload. And then I look at it. And then since he's come back from injury, he's played six games in 20 days. And he's played over 80 minutes in all of them. And, yet, and then we wonder what's going on here. I mean, what, what are your thoughts on particularly on the Nkunku situation and, and then the Gusto one as well? Mate, we don't have a we don't have a, a medical director anymore. He's gone off. He's had his personal issues, bless him. And and obviously he's parted ways with the football club. Obviously, you know we do set our regard, regards to him if it is something that is a personal and a family issue. Like we do hope his family as well. We hope he's okay. But the fact that he's basically been moved on is an indictment of the medical department as a whole. And you've just seen like. This isn't a lot of leg breaks. This isn't a lot of like very serious injuries where they're contact and impact injuries. We've had our fair share of those this season. And, you know, we'll have, I'm sure we'll have plenty more as the, as the seasons go on. But you just see the amount of muscular problems, players not recovering. Mate, as you say before, right? We've had no Champions League football. We've had no Europe to contend with. It's not like we're doing the Club World Cup season where we had all of these games. We were playing 60 odd, you know, plus games, plus preseason, plus everything else we we're doing. And we were flying to America to do stupid games where, you know, Ruben Loftus Cheek pretty much ended his career uh, at Chelsea Football Club. We we're playing stupid games like that. So there's just there's just something going on here. And then in terms of uh, bringing it back to the way that Pochettino is talking about it, mate, honestly, I just think he's being fed information from the club where he's like, right, this guy you're saying to me is a minor issue. So I'm expecting him to be back in the squad very soon. But the medical department, their communication, do you know what, mate? They're very, very good at producing updates for Twitter and for <laughs> for us on our social media. And, and, and I thank them for it because it definitely helps preparation for these podcasts. But what they're not very good at is actually communicating that with the people that need to be communicated with and actually getting them back on the pitch. Because I'd have to say, like, let's go back to Nkunku, as you say. I don't know what keeps going on with these players where it just seems like a really minor thing and then we never see them playing again. Like Lavia, it could be out for the rest of the season at this rate. In Kunku, mate, we just need him so desperately in the squad right now, especially when you look at people like Broya being off. 
you know, potentially. I honestly do have a feeling, mate, and, and you know, remember this moment now when you're watching the game. I have a feeling that Broya won't start tomorrow. I really do have a, I, I have this sneaky feeling with everything that's going on around him, all of this transfer stuff, he's not going to be involved. So Nkunku, is, he needs to be in the squad. So for the fact that he's still injured is, is very, very worrying. But mate, there's stuff going on that I think is so private that we don't know around that medical team. And I feel one day someone's going to come out and do like a coverall novel on, on all this stuff going on at the moment. It's going to be worse than the Eva situation. Tell me that. And maybe, maybe we need to bring Eva back. How would you maybe, feel about that? Maybe, Bring it back. Maybe, maybe it's gone downhill since then. Maybe that. Maybe that. Maybe that's been the problem. But no, it, it is mad. Like, I'm not saying it's all on the manager. I, I agree with you. They're probably being drip fed information. This is what you can say about it. We don't want. I, I understand why they don't want to put time frames on players coming back or exact dates because you open yourself up to criticism when it gets to that date and they're not ready. But at the same time, like we're we're on the opposite end of the spectrum now, where we're just leaving fans in the dark or you know, this putting information out there, which is making, like, you know, people think that we're stupid. It's like, we know there's something wrong with Nkunku. Like, you get the report, or he's out, he's going to be facing three weeks out, then you get two reports from France saying, oh, no, that's not true. And lo and behold, he's been out for three weeks. He'd probably be out for a month. Uh, who do knows? Think, but do, do you think it could be, like, a tactical thing? Like, do you think it's, like... You know, we we gonna say that he could be fit. He might be in the game, and then basically Borough go and a plan a game plan to think. Oh, what do we? How do we stop in Kunku? Um, do, do you know really what I mean? Like, we it feels play, weird. Do we, do we do we really need to be playing those mind games on a mid-table Championship side? I mean, is that no, how low we've fallen? <laughs> yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, mate, we probably do. <laughs> we yeah. probably do. To be honest, no, mate, with you. Mate, Michael Carrick definitely easy. had the had the benefit of us in the first leg. So yeah. <laughs> But I mean, in, t- in terms of Malagusto briefly, man, obviously I mentioned that, you know, obviously come back from injury and generally speaking, right, Chelsea this season and Pochettino coaching staff, whoever, medical staff and whatnot, we've been really careful with bedding players back in. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, with Gusto, who is a key player for us right now with Reese James being out, Definitely. he played six matches between Wolves and uh, the Borough first leg. And, you know, he played at least 80 minutes in all of them. And he particularly played a full 90 in, a, in, the, in the 4-0 win against Preston which is just stupid. And then we're surprised that he's got a bit of muscular overload and he's struggling. What were your thoughts on that particular handling of the situation? Because I think realistically for me, there's only two players where we can say we've kind of messed up. And that's Uga Chukwu when we chucked him straight back in against Wolves because we had no one else. So he wasn't prepared to trust a Castledine from the academy or whatever. And then we've obviously had this situation with Gusto and potentially the Lavia one. Lavia plays, what, 30 minutes on his debut and then he's basically done for months, I'd imagine now. Um, what, what's your thoughts on the Gusto situation? Because I just think, I look at it, I think we just handled that so badly. Yeah, we we have handled it. We have handled it badly. But then I, th- I suppose, do you want the Sassy playing at right back? No, but could be play Gilchrist maybe? Uh, yeah, and, and this is the thing, mate. I suppose it's like, there are other options, aren't there, right back, right? You've got De Sassi yeah. who can do a job there. I don't particularly want to see him there, but I actually think De Sassi is um, unfairly he's, treated sometimes. I don't he's doing all right. He's, he's doing okay, yeah, absolutely. And then you've got Gilchrist, as you say. I think he uh, always looks like he cares more than anything. And and I, and I think that is underestimated in terms of the value of that, about how much players actually want to be there and be on the pitch. If Alfie wants to be there, he's going to give absolutely everything. I'm happy for him to play. And then, mate, I tell you the other one, a lot of people are saying this even to, for the starting 11 against Borough. Why not try Caicedo there? Like, we've got plentiful yeah. options if you look at the 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 sort of the midfield area. Look, we've got injuries. Obviously, Hugo Chukwu isn't going to be there. Lavia isn't going to be there. Uh, we've got Caste back now, so he could be he's one cup, of those players. He's cup-tied, cup though, isn't he? He's, well, yeah, he's cup-tied for this yeah. game, but I'm just yeah. saying, you know, oh, more generally. generally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you've got Carney who could come in and play in that position. And actually, for me, if I'm looking at my starting eleven, like, you know, I'm up for playing Palmer in the number 10 role and having Gallagher drop back. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, there's plenty, there's plenty of options there. So... I, I think Caicedo could very easily do a, a really adequate job at right back. And it's interesting that we haven't seen Pochettino do that. He obviously doesn't fancy him there. But I, I do I do sympathise with Poch to a degree, mate, because I, I just think we've got so little natural options there. And I yeah. don't think he wants to carry on doing that experiment of playing centre-backs throughout the back four. I, I, yeah. And actually, I don't think he fancies Bally Shield that much. So I don't think he oh, actually wants either. to play any of them. Um, no, I think I think it's a real problem. I think we're really struggling with a lack of consistency at the back in terms of partnerships, con- like you know, centre back partnership changing constantly, full back pairing constantly changing. It's not helpful when you're trying to build continuity within a side, build up relationships, patterns of play, understanding between players when you're constantly changing the lineup like 
every week. And then what's going to happen if he decides to put Sanchez back in and they've got to re-get used to him again? So, like, we've got all these things that we've got to deal with. But, I mean, look ahead to the game tomorrow. We'll get into the lineup a little bit later on. But how are you feeling heading into it? Because, obviously, in the league, surprisingly, we've actually been in half-decent form. I think we've won five of our last six, with Wolves the only one that we lost uh, on, on, on Christmas Eve. We obviously won in the cup against Preston, convincingly, which you'd expect. The only, you know, like sort of black mark on the on the on the CV as such was that first leg against Borough. I mean, how how, how do you expect us to approach this game tomorrow? Because for me, I think we just got to go from it from the off because Borough are just going to sit deep. Yeah, we've we've got to we've got to go for it. You, you know what the game plan is going to be, and obviously Carrick can come out with some tactical surprises. And I have to say, right, I, I do rate Carrick as a manager. He's mm. he's done something uh, in the first leg with his tactical setup where he, he targeted Colwell. He came out after the press conference and said, you know, um, we targeted that side because we felt that he was slightly weak and we knew we could get around him, use pace and get balls into the box and basically, you know, um, find our sort of soft underbelly, or, uh, as it were, right? And and so they've gone into that game and they've, they've, they've used their tactical nows. But I do think this is a game, as you say, where if we go and we go big and attack early and get an early goal the game is going to be completely different to the way that it's going to be is if we were slow out of the blocks, slow to make changes. The tactical setup was defensive. I do have some nightmares about this game, mate, and, and we'll get on to, to starting lineups in a second. But I have a bit of a nightmare going on where I'm thinking he'll go very defensive. He won't play Chilwell at left back, which I think will be sacrilegious in this game if he doesn't do that. And he'll play the the three in midfield with Enzo, Caicedo and Gallagher, which I, I, I'm seeing more often than not feeling very defensive. I, it I is. think It is I, defensive. I, I, yeah. And I, so I think if we... I, I think we're going to learn a lot, mate, by the team sheet that comes into this game. And I think if we've got those three in midfield and we have Cole Palmer on one wing and we don't see Chilwell, we will lose the game. And what I what I mean by that is we'll lose the tie. Uh, we might end up, you know, drawing the game or whatever, but but losing the tie. Because I just think if we don't absolutely go for it and get a goal early, um, they're going to grind us down. They, yeah. They're just going to laugh at us. But I have to say, right, uh, maybe it's just that we've been burnt through the the rest of the season, um, and we're we're sort of you know it, it's sort of pessimistic, you know, understandably so. Because I think if you look at their form, you look at where they are in the league, you look at how many injuries they've got, they should not be anywhere near Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. And so that's that's the way that I'm slightly leaning, but I'm also trying to be realistic with the facts of you know we we didn't kill them off in the first leg. How are you feeling about it, mate? Mate, I feel a bit, I'll be honest with you, I feel a bit nervous about it, to be real. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's one of them where, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but it could go either way. I think it's one of those where we know how they're going to set up. They're going to sit deep, you know, they, they're defending a lead and they're going to try and get something from a set piece where we are susceptible to leaking goals and we are susceptible to having lapses of concentration. And the, the most important thing for me is a fast start and getting an early goal. You get an early goal against a team that is looking to sit deep um, and, and defend what they've got. That forces them to come out. It opens the game up and it completely changes the complexion of the game. That's what we've got to do. The longer it goes on goalless, the more frustration is going to grow in the ground in, in the stands. And then the more confidence Middlesbrough are going to get from the game. Even if they concede, you know, it's still one all. We still need, if we're not going to go to extra time and penalties, we still need to win by two goals. Yeah. Um, and the worst thing we can do is, is go a goal down and require three because, look, ultimately, I want to get to the final, of course, whatever way possible. But when you're looking at it from we're playing Tuesday night, Friday night, you do not want an extra half an hour with a stretch squad and you do not want penalties as well. You want to get this done in 90 minutes. So that, that if we're going to get it done in 90, we need to be winning by two clear goals. And yeah, yes, we've, we've done better at home recently, but it's going to require us to be attacking from the off. And yeah. it's going to require us to take our chances when we get them. And I just look at our forward players. And other than Cole Palmer, no one's in good form in terms of the attackers. So I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, if Cole Palmer has an off game, like he did in that first leg, no one's there to step up and and and, and make a difference. And then I, I worry about us defensively. If Chilwell doesn't start, which I wouldn't blame Pochettino for, because, you know, the same thing that I said is stupid with managing with how he managed Gusto. I think with Chilwell's injury record and how long he's been out for, and he's played, what, 15 minutes against Fulham, to chuck him straight in to start a massive game, you're asking for him to get injured again. So I look at it, and I think we're in trouble at fullback. If it ends up being Cole and Sassi, there's no overlapping fullbacks. There's no attacking outlet down either flank. You're asking for, a, you're putting a lot of pressure on the wide players, and you're asking for a not very creative midfield to try and make things happen, which has not been the case that often this season. But 
No. It, it's mad that we're sitting here, mate, and we're unsure whether we can... We're not 100% certain that we can turn over a one-goal deficit against Middlesbrough in a, in a, in a cup semi-final. I mean, that, that's that's a bit alarming. But for me personally, I agree with you, Matt. I look at Gallagher, Enzo, Caicedo. It's obviously the favoured midfield. And it's probably, it's going to be what Poch picks tomorrow. Let's be real. Even if we don't want it, we're going, we're going to see it. I just think for games like this, and for, look, away from home in big games, I absolutely get it. But I look at you know home games against lesser opposition. You do not need all those guys on the pitch at the same time. You don't need it. You could sacrifice one of them and get an extra attacker on there, which will make a big difference. But I just feel with Poch, because the pressure's on a bit, he, he's, I, I described it as, you know, he's, he plays it safe with his, with his team selections. He goes safe. And I get it, managers will go safe when they're under pressure and they need, need a result. But ultimately, you've got to take gambles. And I just think Poch is, doesn't take any gambles with his team selection. I mean, Mate, how many times have Mudrick and Madueke started together? Must be uh, virtually, virtually one, yeah, one, we, or, uh, maybe one or two last season. Yeah, and this, and this for me is is the is the key thing. And it's it, do you know what, mate? It's a cliche about scoring early, and and in a weird way, I would be happy for it to be nil nil at half time with with this with this proviso in this. Yeah. I would it would have to be a first half performance where we've peppered the goal, where we've got shots away, where we've looked very exciting. We look like we are going to score, even if we don't actually end up scoring. So we need players, as you say, like a Nonny and, and like a Mudrick. And, and, and for me, mate, when I'm trying to build my potential lineup for this game, and trust me, mate, I've changed my mind so many times on this. So we'll get into that in a second. But I think when you're, when you're thinking about it, you need to think of players that are going to be able to break down that low block and and there are players in our squad that are very good at getting in behind and, and running on and using their pace and then there are players that are very good at getting in between the lines and being players in a low block so I, I i think the team selection is so key for this game and uh i feel like if we look at that team sheet an hour before the game and it's got certain players in it i just i just know what's going to happen you know it's going to be a slow game and uh and yeah we'll we'll wait and we'll get into <laughs> who the lineup is mate because I'm interested to see yours yeah. as well. Mate, I mean just before we dive into it, I know you're a massive Mudrick fan like myself. What yeah. just briefly on him, right? What do you think's happened? Because in December he was playing really well, he was starting games, he was getting assists, he was getting goals. I know he picked up a knock against Palace, he was on the bench against Luton, but obviously we we didn't see him. I can't remember if he played against Preston in the cup or not. I, I forget now. Um, and obviously he had that cameo against Barra in the second in the first leg which was awful uh, it wasn't just him that was crap but it seems weird right with Mudrick how Poch seems to really fancy him one minute he get he's playing consistent games and doing well and now suddenly mate for me he's behind Palmer he's now behind Medawake he's behind Sterling he's behind Nkunku when he's fit and it appears he might be behind Ben Chilwell as well it seems to have gone like a full 360 of Mudrick I don't understand because he was doing really well and suddenly now he can't seem to get a look in do you know what's funny? That we've, uh, there's a clip doing the rounds. I'm sure you've seen it, which was the the first game that he did against Liverpool, his debut game. Yeah. yeah. When he came on and, and and just basically tore it up against Liverpool, looked absolutely amazing. Looked every pound of the the transfer fee that we spent on him. And I I, I do agree, mate. I think the way that Pochettino's used him recently has shown that he is playing it safe, as you say, and he isn't using mercurial talents like Mikhailo Mudrik. I I do think we're a better team when uh, Mikhailo plays. Yeah. Uh, and I do want to see him getting more game time i think what was interesting I was, I was looking at the stats earlier on today um and looking at the xg stats the sort of the key passing you know how many shots he's creating how many shots he's creating for his teammates and it's interesting that him and raheem sterling almost have per game a very similar sort of record but mikhailo's played half the minutes yeah. that raheem has played this season and and i think that's incredibly interesting to look at because it just shows you that Pochino's faith is inexperienced with Sterling, but if he'd given Mikhailo a bit more of a chance, maybe we would have seen a bit more impact from him. And um, I think when we look at this season as a whole and we look at what the way that we're going into next season, I do think that Pochino will regret some of those minutes that he's given to Sterling uh, and Mikhailo Madrid. And so for me, I'm I'm a big fan of him, and I do think in this game I would be starting him you know, absolutely, yeah. you know, playing him I mean, uh, in this match. I, for sure. I, I just find it weird, right, that Poch is kind of bought in because of his record of developing young players, right? But at the moment, he always goes with experience, like particularly mm. in those wide areas, you know, like at the expense of developing these younger players. And I just kind of, I just, it just confuses me sometimes with what he does. But let's get into the lineup, mate. Obviously, 
this is what we'd like to see rather than what we think Pochettino is going to pick. I think, look, goalkeeper's obvious. It's Petrovic between the sticks. We know that. Uh, for you, mate, what's your what's your back line? I mean, if, if I start with my centre-back pairings, I'm going Thiago Silva and Badia Shil. I know Badia shil has been a bit shaky recently, but given we're going to have to shift the centre-half to right-back um, and left-back as well, probably, I think that, that's kind of the only logical solution. I mean, are you, are you agreeing with that or are you going someone different? So what I'm, I'm actually going to risk Chilwell in this game. So basically... Yeah. I'll, I'll start with that because I think that changes the entire back four for me. So what we've seen, uh, I, I suppose this is my back four, but I'm also trying to slightly preempt what I think Pochettino will do as well because it, it doesn't make sense to do to just predict something that isn't definitely yeah. going to happen. When you look at what Pochettino's done, he's, he's pretty much for the entire season got asymmetric with the back four. He's played a centre-back on one side and, and then had a very attacking wing-back on the other. He's effectively made a three and then allowed one of the, the wing-backs to bomb on. Gusto, as we've seen today, mate, come out of the come out of the blue. We've seen that he hasn't been training. We were looking at all the training pitches. He isn't there, and he, it, what a surprise! He isn't involved in the in the match squad, uh, you know, in the game. So he's not going to be there. So what I'm doing is I'm moving the 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 sort of attacking impetus over to that that side. Obviously, he doesn't see Gusto and Chilwell, or I actually think even Reese James and Chilwell playing in the same team together. That's just the way that Pochettino is yeah, looking maybe. at it now. I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it, but I think that's what he's made his uh, decisions very clear there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Chilwell on the left. I'm going to play De Sassi on the right, allow De Sassi to form the back three. Colwell moves into centre-back, which is his better position anyway, and have him alongside Thiago Silva. I like Badia Schill. Uh, I don't think Pochettino does. And I actually do think that Badia Schill will not be with us uh, at the start of next season. That is right, my that's, prediction. That's, that's, a bold, that's a bold call. Bold call. Fair. Um, mate, I, mate, mate, I, I hear it. I, I like him. I think he's a good player. He come and made an instant impact. But for whatever reason, that injury set him back. And now we're playing a back four most of the time. There's one less place to play. Um, I still think he's got a future, but it's clear that the manager doesn't fancy him that much at the moment. Look, I, I like your back four and I absolutely agree with what you're saying. I just feel it's a big gamble to stick Chilwell in. So look, I would like to stick Chilwell in, uh, but ultimately for me, I'd go uh, Colwell and then De Sassi. But if Chilwell starts, then I'd stick Colwell in the middle. In terms of the midfield pivot, I think we can both agree it's Enzo and Caicedo. I mean, what have you what have you made of the criticism of Caicedo from pundits in the media? Because look, what I would say is, is that, one, they've clearly not been watching him, and two, they're obviously attacking him based on the price tag. Am I saying he's been £115 million worth of, of quality so far? No. But has he been anywhere near as bad as people are making out? Absolutely not. I think he's actually low-key done pretty well. And when you look at like the position maps and stuff, average positions in a game, you can see Gallagher's positional sense is non-existent, right? And Caicedo <laughs> has been playing the you know, midfield on his own. I mean, what have you made of the criticism of Caicedo? Because I actually, like, I just think, are these guys watching him? Like, yes, he's not been unbelievable, but he's actually been all right. I love it, mate. Because do you know what this shows? pundits that are watching uh, the YouTube highlights and they're not watching the games. It's very they're easy. Like, I love this. It's almost, it, it's, you're so right. It's almost like you can see what pundits actually watch football and what pundits don't from their criticism of Kaiseido. Like it's, it's brilliant. And actually you see it with a lot of fans as well. Like if they're not watching the full games, people will be questioning Kaiseido and how good he is. When you actually watch him and you look at what he does, what he does is never going to be on a highlight reel. It's never going to be on match of the day. It, you know, it just isn't going to be like that because what he does is he does the dirty stuff. He does a relatively simple pass, but, but you know, more often than not, it's actually some decent passes forwards. And also he gets up and down. I think he's limited actually in the system that we're playing. Similar way to what the way that Kante was originally used. You know, he was he was seen as a pivot player. And then if you allowed him to bomb on, he actually would get in the box and actually make attacking contributions as well. I think Caicedo is very similar to that. And yeah, man, I just I just don't agree with it. And and uh I think what people love with Chelsea is sort of like beating us, you know, across the head with the sort of the transfer fees. And they love our transfer failings. And I don't think either of uh Caicedo or Enzo are failures now or failures in the future. And and it's very sort of like fashionable to sort of say, oh, Chelsea are rubbish. They can't bring any new signings in. We had to revolutionise a midfield that was with us for a very long time, full of world-class elite quality. And they've they've sort of replicated as much as they possibly can do with some very, very young players that have had to learn uh, in Enzo, had to learn the league from scratch. And Caicedo has had to basically go up a, a complete notch to what he was doing. And bear in mind, 
you know, he was on loan a couple of seasons ago in a very sort of, you know, a, a much worse league than even, you know, the Premier League. So, yeah, I think um, I think both of them are absolutely brilliant. And I do think the Kai said anything just shows you people that don't watch football. No, no, absolutely, mate. I mean, moving on to the front three then. I mean, if we start on the right-hand side, for me, I'm going Noni Medoweke and then I'm going Cole Palmer as the 10. And I'd put Mikhailo Mudrik on the left. Um, that would be my three behind the striker, which I'd go with Amanda Broyer, even though he's been poor. And I don't think he's going to, there's a, every chance he won't be here at the end of this month, but he certainly won't be here at the start of next season. I just feel we need a focal point at the top end of the pitch. We tried the false nine in the first leg. It didn't work. Um, so I'd be starting Broyer with Mudrik, Palmer and Madueke behind him. How, how do you see that? How do you see that front four lining up from your point of view? It's a really interesting one. And do you know what, mate? I've slagged off the, the midfield three of Gallagher being in there. Um, yeah. But I just think I just think at the moment with the, the players that we have available to us, I, I do think that Gallagher will end up being the number 10. So I've put him in the, in the number 10 role. Yeah. And then you're thinking, how the hell am I fitting all these other players in? And the simple answer, mate, is that I don't think Amanda Broya will be played in this game. The reason why I'm saying that is because all of the transfer rumours, I don't think they're going to want to risk him getting a big injury, especially with the fact that they really want to push him out in January. They've made that incredibly abundantly clear that they're happy to see him go. And so I think um, unless Pochettino pulls one of those sort of power cards where he goes, I want this boy to play and I don't care if you're going to sell him or not. I yeah. honestly think there'll be a directive to sort of say that you shouldn't be in the team. So I, I do think, and, and this is what I was saying earlier about, you know, Nkunku being, being out was a real shame. I do think they will persist with the false nine. It, it may not end up being Cole Palmer in that false nine. It could be Sterling. It could be it could be Sterling. And I've actually talked at length, mate, about Nonny being given a chance in that false nine. Yeah, what I like about Nonny is he his footwork is very good. I tell you what, he, he can bag a he can get a good shot away as well. Uh, and I think he's got a bit more I think he could do some hold up play. I'm not saying he's gonna be, you know, a Giroud level of hold-up play, but I think his yeah. hold-up play would be better than what Raheem Sterling would be. And so the way that I've done it at the moment is I've gone for uh, Gallagher in the 10, I've gone for Nonny on the right, Mudrick on the left, and Cole Palmer through the middle. I'm not playing yeah. Raheem Sterling in this. No. Um, my rationale, you could change Mudrick and play Sterling because you you could argue that Sterling is better against a low block than Mudrick. You know, you, I don't necessarily agree, but I, I think you could argue with that. So I'm going, I'm going with that front three, and I, and I want it to be more fluid than what it was before. Like I'm, I'm happy if you end up, you know, if Nonny ends up being in the middle, I'm happy for him to stay there for a bit. I'm happy for then the other boys to rotate. I just think at the moment, if it gets too um, solid, if it gets too structured, then I think we miss out. And and what you're doing with the false nine is really rotating players in and out. And you just don't you just don't know where each player is going to be. And you, with a championship defence filled with injuries, I just think that movement could be the 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 thing that sort of Mate, gets us the goals. I, I would agree with that to an extent. We saw it work very very well against Arsenal for 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 eighty odd minutes. Um, yeah, and I, I agree with you. Like when you've got like a focal point to defend against, it can often be easier. Whereas if you've got a lot of tricky players interchanging, constantly moving about, picking up different positions, that that's hard to track and that's hard to pick up. So look, I while I feel Breyer will play, I absolutely can see that the false nine could could definitely happen. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm worried about options on the bench tomorrow if we need them. There's not going to be very many. It's going to be lacking. The team that's out there is is going to have to is going to have to get the job done. Um, I guess, mate, to round out, score prediction, what are you saying? Well, as we, as we touched on earlier, we do not want extra time or penalties in this game with how quickly we're playing on Friday, how many players we've got out. Um, you can guarantee someone would go down injured in extra time or in training the next day they're, they're done in. Um, what are you saying? For, for me, mate, I'm going... I'm going with a 3-1 win in, in 90 oh, minutes. You're confident, yeah. mate. You're confident. quite confident in that, isn't it? I said I was a bit yeah. unsure, but now I've just gone, I've just gone all, all, all guns blazing. Gone in. I think, I think <laughs> who scores the goal? Who scores three goals? To, like, three who's goals, scoring goals. Three goals. I reckon we go with a Thiago Silva header. Uh, <laughs> and then I'll go with a goal from Mudawake. And I'll go with a goal from Sterling, even though I don't like him. He, he might well score. I'm going to go 3-1. Like How are you saying? I just don't want any extra time and no penalties. Do you know what, mate? I feel like because I've been so bullish at the start of the season, I've chucked some scores out there that have been completely wrong. <laughs> I, I'm changing what, I'm, what I would have said otherwise. I, the way that I see it, and I'm going to try and give you a play-by-play -play here, I reckon we go in at half-time and it's nil-nil. Yeah. I reckon we score 
quite quickly after half time after Pochettino has bollocked them and basically changed his tactics. Um, uh, I don't think he'll do any subs, but I think he'll change the sort of formation. And then I think they'll score at about 70, 80 minutes and it'll be squeaky bum time. And then we'll score very late on, almost like a 90th minute uh, equaliser in terms of the tie. And then I think it will go to extra time. And I think it will go to penalty. And I think we'll win on penalties. So let's see. No, if I, if I get that prediction correct, mate, I'm going to win a lot of money. I'm going to yeah, win a mate, lot you of should money. Maybe do that as a bet, we maybe do that as a bet builder, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I just think I just think we're going to take extra time out. I know you're going to hate it, but I can just see. Uh, yeah, time. mate, I'll be honest, mate. I won't be enjoying it. Uh, you know, the Newcastle penalties were stressful enough, even though our penalties were actually really good in that game. You can guarantee that if we go penalties again, it's, it won't, we won't get five that good again. Um, but... You, you, you never know, you never know. But ultimately, at the end of the day, as long as we make it to Wembley, that's the most important thing. That's all that matters. I don't care how shit the game is. Just get to Wembley. And then we yeah. can obviously deal with Liverpool or Fulham when we get there. But I'm not thinking about that feeling, right now. How, how are you feeling about like So, you know, I know we're jumping the gun a bit. But if we, yeah. do, get to, if we do get to the final, let's be honest, it's probably going to be Liverpool. Probably going to be Do Liverpool, you actually yeah. think that we beat Liverpool? Uh, if I'm being honest, mate, No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, just, I know it's a final I know anything can happen but yeah. let's be real they're a lot better than us right now I know a final is a one-off game but they are much better than us um, I just don't know you've got that experience and know-how in the team that we had a couple years ago when we took them to two penalty shootouts in the final I just look at it and I think we lack experience we lack leadership in those big games and it would be a big ask for a lot of those youngsters probably a lot of them playing in their first finals to, to, go, and, to, to go and do a job but let's at least get there and give ourselves half a chance to, to begin with. And who knows, mate, maybe if we do get there, maybe Fulham can, can spring a surprise. Um, can and then beat us. <laughs> yeah, 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 let's, yeah let's, let's not go with that one. But yeah, no, yeah. Mate, we have to, we have to. Otherwise, we're, we're, we, we, we are in massive trouble if we don't do that. But mate, yeah. thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure chatting things, Chelsea. If, you, if people want to check out more of what you do, obviously over on the kickoff and you've got your own channel as well, where, where, where should they be going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just two YouTube uh, channels to subscribe to. If you can go over to Josh Veste, you've got lots of uh, Chelsea content there. I'm trying to do a review every week. So yeah, be very uh, grateful if you could go over there. And yeah, go and subscribe to the kickoff. We're doing live streams again almost every week, uh, focusing on the big games. And uh, we've got Jerry Knight and myself representing the Chelsea boys there. So yeah, would love it if uh, yeah you subscribe to, uh, to those channels. But yeah. yeah. Thanks so much for having me on, mate. Honestly, love chatting to you about Chelsea and uh, and hopefully we can get a win in this game. Are you going? Yeah, I'll be there tomorrow, mate. Yeah, buzzing, mate. Buzzing. buzzing. Yeah, I'm going to be watching from home. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how well we do. Yeah, hopefully it won't be a depressing journey home, but we'll, we'll see what we do. But yeah, guys, <laughs> make sure you check out those two channels. Subscribe, uh, show the guys some love at the kickoff and show Josh some love on his channel. Hopefully this time tomorrow, guys, will be celebrating, well, not quite this time. Oh, yeah, this, no, not this time tomorrow, but hopefully, you know, tomorrow night we'll be celebrating a place at Wembley. If not, things could get pretty toxic. But thanks for tuning in, guys. As always, smash the like, subscribe to the channel, leave your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll catch you again soon.